Tis the season to deck the halls, and nobody does it quite like the DuPonts. I'm Jackie Ferris. We are at Winter Tour for its annual Yuletide celebration. But this year's festivities are inspired by the iconic fashion designer Ann Lowe. Get ready for a fantastic show. The 302 is headed your way. She was society's best kept secret, but designer Ann Lowe is no longer a secret, but she might be surprised to find out she is the inspiration for a line of designer Christmas trees right here at Winter Tour during Yuletide. I'm joined now by Reggie Lynch. She is the Director of Interpretation and Engagement. Reggie, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's talk a little bit about Yuletide this year is so much different. We love to come and ooh and ah at the various trees, but this is tying into your um, Anne Lowe exhibit upstairs, right? It is, yeah. With, uh, with the Anne Lowe exhibit, we just had so much inspiration for all of the beauty in those gowns and all the incredible craft work that she put into them. And we decided why not celebrate that at Yuletide with trees. And then of course, you'll hear a little more about how far we went with some of that. Absolutely, a lot of really creative ideas. And we're gonna talk to two local designers um, who are inspired by Anne Lowe and are a part of this. But I wanna get to what she's most famous for besides being awesome, is the Jackie dress. And you have a tree that is inspired of the Jackie dress. Tell me about this gorgeous tree. Absolutely. So yes, Anne Lowe, uh, kind of one of her biggest clients, certainly her biggest client was Jackie Kennedy. She designed her wedding gown with these beautiful big rosettes, all handmade, all hand stitched. There's just an incredible story about that dress in and of itself. And we knew we couldn't do this exhibit celebrating her without celebrating that. So uh, our floral designer, Heidi Melatana and her floral team, have created this, this tree that is this beautiful homage to Anne Lowe. It has white lilies and this beautiful lace. And then of course they've, they've recreated those signature rosettes that are on the original gown. Now for the folks at home who may not know the story of the Jackie dress and how long it took for Anne Lowe to get credit, tell us a little bit about it. Absolutely. So she did design Jackie Kennedy's wedding dress. It, she went, she designed the whole bridal party in fact, um, all the, all the um, bridesmaids gowns and all the rest of it. And um, the dress is actually just weeks before the wedding got damaged in a flood and she had to recreate the entire dress by, her, not just by herself, but with, with the team of, of those closest to her. It's just an incredible story of resilience and, and creativity and fire under pressure and sort of all the things that make Anne Lowe incredible. Well, this entire exhibit is incredible. Now, we have to talk about this showstopper yes. right behind us. This is also inspired of a dress, right? It is. This uh, tree designed by one of our winter staff, Mac Truex, um, it is an homage to uh, one of the many ball gowns that Ann Lowe created. So she was known for creating these, these fantastic gowns for these big, huge uh, society balls. This one in particular was designed for the Axe Arben ball. Axe Arben is Nebraska spelled backwards. Oh, okay, I didn't so, know this. <laughs> um, so it was this big ball that was held in Nebraska um, to, to celebrate the, the families in Nebraska. And it is this amazing coral pink dress with taffeta and flowers. Uh, and, and we've recreated that here. It's also a little bit of an homage to Winotour uh, because we have an incredible quince garden here uh, and it, it turns all these just beautiful shades of, of white and pink and of course this really beautiful corally red. Now you have this really gorgeous, uh, it's like a white dress in the exhibit that has grapes and things and the tree that is inspired of this dress really takes your breath away because it's so lovely. Absolutely. Yeah, that was another uh, tree by our floral designer and floral team. Uh, and they've recreated those grapes with Christmas balls and the whole thing. 
this this whole show is just so sparkly and lovely and and really really gets off the season just the right way and it's just a, a, a new twist because we're so used like I said to the the traditional Christmas trees and all the grandeur that goes with it but you have a pink feather tree <laughs> is that right we have a couple of pink trees in various <laughs> various shades uh, we have one pink tree inspired by another Anne Lowe gown that uh, it, it's another sort of pale pink gown um, it's covered in these incredible orchids um, HF DuPont our founder here at Wena Tour loved orchids and so the tree is an homage again to HF but also to Anne Lowe. Mm -hmm. And another tribute to Anne Lowe which they all are I suppose. Yeah. Um, the tree that actually has her as a theme or like little. Yeah so we knew you know we couldn't do this installation with having without having her present somewhere. Of course she's present sort of in the the concept and the ideas but we wanted her face somewhere um, and so we have a whole tree that's covered in both pictures of her dress but also pictures of her. Um, she was just an incredible individual and we wanted to find in many ways to celebrate that as possible. Now you mentioned um, the flowers and um, that grow here and I know that you guys keep the flowers year round to make a tree that is one of a kind every year. Talk to me about this year's floral tree. Yes, yeah, so every year we do a dried flower tree in our conservatory. It is a showstopper. I mean, I, it's hard to pick a favorite this year, but every single year the dried flower tree is a showstopper. It is, I don't even know how many feet tall it is this year. I think it's 10 feet tall. Um, it's covered in sunflowers and, you know, Queen Anne's lace and all of these flowers that either grow here on the estate or are used in our live floral displays in the house. Mm -hmm. get dried throughout the year and then they're they're organized by our fly, our floral team uh, onto this beautiful tree organized doesn't organize puts it lightly they're designed and crafted now it looks even though it's you have a floral tree every year it looks different every year every year yeah and that's a lot to do with sort of what they put in the house at that time what grows well that year um, so every single year it's different so how long does it take to do all of this? I can imagine, I have a tough enough time doing my own home decorations, but I cannot imagine the planning. I mean, when do you start and how do you come up with your ideas? We start, we are already thinking about Yuletide next year. So this is a long endeavor. Um, you know, our, our fantastic staff, I just work with the most creative people. I feel so lucky. Um, and they're, they're brainstorming kind of the minute that, that we just start thinking about Yuletide. They're already thinking about the next year. Absolutely. And we love coming every single year because <laughs> it's so different. And this year is no exception. I think you guys have raised the bar. I don't know how yeah. you're going to do anything better <laughs> next year. But we're going to talk a little bit about another feature to Yuletide every year. And that's the gingerbread display when we return. My name is Ryan Grover, and I'm the director of Rockwood Park and Museum, and I'd like to share our Christmas fantasies with the 302. Welcome back. Now, I was corrected in the break that this is only the second year that you guys have done the gingerbread house. I guess I was just so blown away by all the trees that I thought there was gingerbread as well. So last year, the gingerbread house was of the mansion itself. What do we have going this year? That's right, this year. So uh, we've been working with Bread and Beck's Bakery, which is a bakery out of Philadelphia. Um, they first started in 1898. Wow. 1889, I had that reversed. But, um, you know, one of the oldest bakeries in the area. Uh, we, we came to them last year and said, can you make our mansion out of gingerbread? And they said, of course. <laughs> so they designed this incredible mansion. And so this year we said, well, we got to go back to them. We have to make this an annual tradition. Um, we, we came to them and we said, you know, we explain we're doing the Anne Lowe exhibit. We explain the dresses are very floral. She would hand roll these incredible flowers. Can you do something to pay tribute to that? So they came and, and they, they looked around and they decided to do our Enchanted Woods, which our Enchanted Woods is our fairy garden here oh, on the grounds, yeah. uh, designed for children, but I would argue for all ages. Um, and they have just done an incredible job. They've recreated every detail, um, every structure. It's it's just wonderful. I can imagine that they probably went from photos, that they, did they come out and take pictures of everything? They and did, yeah, they did their due diligence. They came out, uh, took photos of everything. Uh, they've even included a tram. Okay. Uh, so one of the greatest ways to experience Winnetour is via a guided tram. And they included that tram in there. Our, 
our head of tour programs was very excited to see that um, and you know down to the to every little detail. It really is, is cool when you look at it because it has the fairy cottage and everything seems like it's to scale. Uh, yeah I, I, I don't know how they did it. it it does look quite to scale it is you know almost an, ex an exact replica. One really fun thing that they've done is they've actually hidden little gingerbread fairies throughout oh. the whole garden so you can come and try and spot if you you know see if you can see all the fairies um, adds a little whimsy to something that's already incredibly whimsical. Absolutely and I know that there is the fairy circle yeah. out there. So uh, in the Enchanted Woods we have uh, a circle of mushrooms that actually steam and smoke when uh, when kids run through them and they've even included that. Um, there's also you know electric lights they've put battery operated lights all throughout to give a little, little sparkle. Um, there's a really lovely part of Enchanted Woods that's a water feature that kids mm -hmm. can play with. They can scoop things out of the water and they've included that down to the level of actual running water, which is wow, just incredible. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. So I know that you guys are very meticulous about every little detail in each exhibit. So my question, when we look at this gingerbread, there are a lot of uh, you know floral kind of touches. Are these indicative of the kinds of plants and flowers that we find in Enchanted Woods? And what kind of, what kind of, uh, what's represented there? Yeah. So some of them are, um, some of them are a little artistic license. They've put an awful lot of Christmas trees in there, which is perfect, perfect, perfect for the season. Um, they've even decorated them with snow, which is really lovely. Um, Honestly, one of my favorite things about it is how incredible it smells. You can smell it the minute you walk into the museum and you just, you know, you want to go right to that smell. It just, it, it's, yeah. it's warm and welcoming. It reminds you of the holidays. Our crew, that's one of the things that they were saying. They remembered <laughs> it from last year and they're like, I can't wait to smell it because everybody's <laughs> a fan of gingerbread. Now, while we're talking about enchanted um, woods, you know, it's a thing that families can go see, you know, in the warmer, months. Can you tell us a little bit about that for people who maybe haven't been here? Absolutely. Yeah, the Enchanted Woods, sort of the legend behind Enchanted Woods. Uh, so there were two young girls who grew up here, HF's daughter, Henry Francis DuPont's daughters. Um, it's actually on the site of their former playground. Uh, and sort of the legend is that when the girls grew up and left, the fairies came to Winotaur and wanted to bring them back. And so what they did was they went around Winotaur and they pulled pillars and um, structures and plants and planted this beautiful garden in hopes that, you know, at least the, the girls would come back, but that also lots of other children would come back, and they certainly have. We, it is an incredible place for families year round, you know, as long as when it's open, the garden is open. So what's the best time to go? I mean, well, summer, we spring? Do, summer is lovely. We do have a big um, enchanted summer day. Uh, that really is located at, at the Enchanted Woods. Um, there are fairies that day, there are people blowing bubbles, there are activities. Um, it's just, anytime you go, it's just an incredible time, but but summer is one of the, the most lovely times. Now I wanna bring it back to Yuletide and this exhibit um, inspired of Anne Lowe. In our next segment, we're gonna talk to two designers. Give us a little preview, yeah. give us their resume and the rundown before you meet them. Absolutely, so I have, it's been such a privilege to work with these two. Uh, couturiers this year, uh, Sata Maze Beeks and Sean Baron Pinckney. They are both local to Delaware, but their work has just exploded. They're all over the place. Vogue, you know, all, all of these different publications. Um, it, it's just been, again, it's just been such a privilege. The way that they, the craft that they craft and care that they put into these pieces, all of the pieces that they've created are incredibly personal. Um, tied both to their family, but inspired by Lowe. Um, it's just it's just been a joy to, to witness it. All righty, we're gonna take a look at both of those designs, or there's actually a lot of designs when we return. I'm Heather Campbell Coyle from the Delaware Art Museum and I'm excited to bring children's illustration to life on the 302. 
Welcome back. We were talking about those two local couturiers. I'm joined now by Asata Maze Beeks to talk a little bit about her Anlo inspired design. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about you. Yes, well, I was born and raised in Wilmington, Delaware. I always knew I wanted to be an artist of some sort since I was maybe four years old. And in high school, I went to AI DuPont High School and learned how to sew. Um, fell in love with it and it's been a huge part of my life ever since. I've traveled, I've lived in LA, I've worked in Europe, and I've been back home and have started my own small business. And this is my first time doing an installation with my work. So it's been a pleasure and an honor to be considered and to be a part of Yuletide this year, especially to be able to represent Anne Lowe, HF DuPont, and a big part of the inspiration were some of my own family members. So let's talk a little bit about your inspiration here. Beautiful, beautiful dress with an accompanying hat. Tell me about that. Yes, so uh, one of my signature looks over the past few years has been patchwork. Uh, at first, it was just an idea to be able to have a sustainable approach to using the remnants of all of my projects that would be left over. And it also ties into the rich history of quilting and patchworking from the African-American community, especially in the South. And it just reminded me when I heard of Anne Lowe learning how to sew from her mother and her grandmother and using the scraps and remnants of their projects. And my grandmother gifted me my first sewing machine. So this dress and gown was an, is an ode to um, that whole story, to be honest. Absolutely, <laughs> it really is gorgeous. Thank you know, you. it's something that you could wear, you know, to a formal event or to it can go a casual. It could be just be anything, really. And right. that's the beauty of of Anne Lowe. She did so much yes. in her design. She did, and I feel like that's a part of my style too. I love to be able to play around with that um, boundary of casual and formal. And this was a a part of that as well. Now, did you work with Winterthur um, with the flowers that stand next to it or did you, did they pick up from the dress or how was the collaboration? Yes, well, there is an amazing floral director named Heidi here at Winterthur and we picked out these flowers together to go along with some of the colors in the gown. So that was also really cool for me. I've never done any collaboration with florals before and it added such a personal touch to this part of the installation. Well, it really is beautiful, all thank brought you. together. It just must feel really good to <laughs> be a part does. of this. It's surreal. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me again. So I'm here with our second couturier, Sean Baron Pinkney. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about your blooming velvet dress. It really is beautiful. Thank you so much. So it's a red velvet, washed velvet coat and a company dress underneath. And it mm -hmm. is paired with uh, French goupier lace and it's silk lined. And the flowers are from m and Mossberg in Manhattan, custom silk flowers. When we look at this design, it really does speak to everything that Anne Lowe was, not just because of the color, but because of the roses. She was really known for her roses. Yes, and handmade silk flowers, trapunto stitching. I mean, her adornments were amazing. So how did you decide on this particular design? Well, the original uh, dress that I saw that inspired me was a white silk that had these voluptuous uh, velvet roses that were handmade all throughout the back and then a silk trapant to evergreen vines. And I don't have that skill that Anne Lowe had for making trapanto. So I scoured the um, internet and looked at m and Smallsburg and I looked at B&J Fabrics, which I love buying lace from, and they had this lace. So it took me some time to actually purchased it because I wanted to make sure that I was giving homage to Anne Lowe and not taking the lazy way out, so to speak. So that's what inspired me to use this, this rose lace. Now you were saying that this is kind of an evolution. It starts out one way and there are a couple of uh, photos that when people come to see the exhibit that they can see where it started, the, yes. the inspiration. Yes. So can you talk to me about that process with this dress? Well, so I wanted to incorporate 
an ensemble. So it's literally a coat and then underneath the coat, there's a cocktail dress. So I always think about women and like when you're purchasing a look, you wanna be able to wear it multiple different ways. So I wanted it to be comfortable, but also something that you could wear with, you know, wear the coat with a pair of jeans or with a tap pan or uh, wear the dress with the sweater on top or a bolero or a jean jacket. So I just wanna make it modern. And although it's exquisite and uh, you know, the the, tree, the treatments and the fabrics are luxurious. I want you to be able to play with it also. Absolutely, and it's very interchangeable, like you were saying. So tell us a little bit about, you know, about you, and if someone sees this, then like, oh, I just have to know more yes. about Sean. Yeah, so I started sewing by watching my mom. She was a part of a sewing circle, and they would make their evening gowns to go to cabarets in the 70s. So I, I would sit and watch her, you know, create these things out of fabric and they put them on and they were moving. I couldn't believe how a flat fabric and paper patterns can transform into a piece. So I also watched my mom going through a divorce and the power of clothing and what and how it gave her the confidence to become a, an amazing mom for us. Um, and so I, I used that and I used clothing as a tool to help support people to help, you know, most times I, when people come to me as a couturier, people talk about the bad parts about their self. And I'm going, no, 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 let's celebrate the good parts. Let's find a way to celebrate you. So I use cloth to do that. Um, if somebody is interested in, in speaking to me or buying my wares, I'm at SeanBaronPinkney.com. Well, Sean, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure that when people go through the exhibit, they're gonna be inspired by all of the creations. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back. Isn't this just gorgeous? I mean, everything in the exhibit is a showstopper. If you come to Winter Tour to check it out, make sure you snap a couple of pictures and share it with us on Facebook. Now, here are a couple of other things you might want to check out. For more information on Winter Tour, visit wintertour.org. That'll do it for this week's episode of The 302. Make sure you follow us on Facebook where you will see behind the scenes content you're not gonna see anywhere else. We're gonna leave you now with an even bigger cornucopia of Christmas. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. Tell them you saw it on The 302.